Well, Representative George Santos had to get his family, his mommy and daddy, to co-sign his bond. Wow. I, I thought this guy was rich. The crowded 2024 Republican field grew again with former Texas Congressman Will Hurd now jumping into the race. I want to let everybody know that this morning um, I filed to be the Republican nominee for president of the United States. Uh, this is During his announcement on CBS Mornings, Hurd also said he wants the Republican Party to talk about the future, not the past. Meanwhile, it was revealed two family members helped New York Republican Congressman George Santos post his bail. He fought to keep their identities a secret. CBS News congressional correspondent Nicole Killian joins us now. Nicole, thank you so much for being here. You actually caught Congressman Santos today on Capitol Hill and asked him about this. What did you learn? Yeah, that's right. Well, of course, we have now learned that the individuals who guaranteed his bond, his $500,000 bond following that 13-count uh, criminal indictment, were his aunt and his father. And so I asked him more about their involvement. Take a listen. I, I wonder if he had to call him and, like, beg and cry for some help because if that was the case, that would be hilarious. Tell me more about why your aunt and your father put up your bail. It's for my family. If anything ever happened to you, wouldn't your family come to your aid? Do you think have money? Uh, I beg your pardon? Don't you think that's a little invasive? That's the, that's well, my actually... understanding is your dad is a construction. That's exactly... I love how, how he pretends like he he's he needs privacy and stuff when, like, if if he didn't lie about his entire life and stuff, he wouldn't be in this position where people would be asking, hey, are your, are your family members you know, rich enough to be able to afford your bond, which I think is like a million dollars. I don't, and I don't, like, what, 10% of that is like a hundred thousand dollars. Exactly. That's exactly the reason that I chose to keep their identity secure. My dad's an honest working man. <laughs> My dad's an honest working man. Like, no, the reason you, you chose to keep them secret because you just didn't want to know that it's, you're begging your family for help. Now, Santos's father is a painter. His aunt works for the U.S. Postal Service. Santos told me that he has spoken to both of them since their names have been unsealed. And uh, what he said that they told him is that, you know, look, let's see how this goes. But he acknowledged that they are concerned. And he said uh, he's particularly concerned that uh, especially folks in the media may try to go after them. And that is why he and his attorney had argued for uh, keeping their names uh, uh, and their identities under wraps. Uh, that being said, uh, you know, keep in mind that there is an ongoing House ethics investigation that is ongoing that is also interested in some of this information. Santos told me that he believes that, uh, you know, the committee has known for a while now that his family members were involved in helping to uh, guarantee his bail uh, and isn't concerned. But the panel did issue a quite an interesting statement uh, earlier today uh, saying that they are working to resolve this matter expeditiously. Of course, the Ethics Committee also looking into a number of other allegations against Santos, uh, ranging from uh, potential, uh, you know, uh, campaign misconduct, uh, sexual misconduct, uh, and other allegations. So that investigation... God, I hope, I hope Santos is put in prison for the rest of his life. I, I mean, if you lie to, to get... Uh, get into Congress and stuff, you should be put in prison for the rest of your life. And also, we need to investigate every single congressional member for misconduct, corruption, misappropriation of funds, or whatever, and put them in prison for it. Uh, separate from uh, this issue involving the bail uh, remains ongoing. Nicole, shifting gears, you also spoke today with Republican presidential candidate Vivek Ramaswamy, who was on Capitol Hill. What did he have to say about the state of the race? Yeah, that's right. Well, he was on the Hill in part to speak with House Republicans, a small group of uh, House Republicans, but he also was here for the visit of Indian Prime Minister Modi, who is addressing Congress uh, this evening. Uh, but we did have an opportunity to talk about the 2024 field, especially now that there is a new entrant into the race. Will Hurd, here's his reaction to his announcement. I think the more the merrier. My view is competition breeds strength. I think we need more debate in our party. 
party, not just about the who. We obsess over the who. We need to talk about the what and the why. What do we stand for? Why do we stand for it? I think our base, I've traveled this country, is high. This guy is hilarious. He is the dude that uh, what has um, pushed for pardons for Trump if they become president because he thinks that is what is going to get him votes. Hungry for an outsider, somebody who's not a professional politician. I think there is a hunger for a new generation. I mean, do you feel the feel, though? Uh, he's doing the same thing that Trump is doing. I'm an outsider. I'm not a real politician. Blah, blah, blah. You should vote for me. I'm an average show. It's getting too large at this point. I don't think so. And now, of course, in terms of uh, Vivek Ramaswamy, I did also ask him uh, more specifically, uh, not only about comments from Will Hurd, who earlier today on CBS Morning said that he feels that some of the GOP candidates are afraid of the former president, but you also have Chris Christie this week, who has suggested that some of his uh, fellow Republican contenders uh, aren't being t uh, tough enough on the former president, aren't willing to go after him, which is something, of course, we have seen Chris Christie do. So I asked for Vivek, his response to that. And my message to Chris Christie is this. His criticism of Donald Trump includes the fact that Trump runs on vengeance and grievance. Well, I think it's no better if you're running on vengeance and grievance of your own against an individual either. And for me, I'm done obsessing over... Yeah, I mean, pretty much Trump is the only one who is running on basically... But, well, I mean, the right wing kind of all runs on vengeance. They all want to kind of attack the people that they can they claim to be attacking them uh but yeah trump is outright saying that you know if he becomes president he's going to take out his revenge on the people he thinks caused him harm and that is not the type of person you want to be a leader over the who I want to move forward as a country. And now he told me that. But you can't move forward if you don't address the issues that are happening at the moment. If you just ignore the wound in your leg, it's just going to fester and get worse. He feels that he will be able to hold his own in this race, particularly as we get closer to the upcoming debate later this summer. He said that that will be critical because, of course, uh, keep in mind, uh, the former president still has quite a commanding lead over all of his rivals. And so uh, that is not dissuading Vivek at this point from staying in the race, even though he acknowledged to me that he feels that some of these candidates could eventually drop out.